Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe uh, video comments. We're filming this week from my hotel in Chicago. You recall we were in Las Vegas for the SALT conference at the end of last week. And now it is Thursday evening and I've been in Chicago for partner meetings with Hightower, the Bonson Group's beloved partner, a, a community of just outstanding advisors around the country. And we've been having some really robust investment discussions and and uh, meetings around capital markets and just best practices amongst each other regarding our own businesses, how we can best serve our clients, and, and how we're approaching investment markets in these difficult times. Speaking of difficult times, it was a very interesting week. Today, in particular, Thursday, the market closed down a little less than 100 points. At one point, it was down over 200. But we've had big up days and down days again. But net-net, we should end the week down a little bit. We'll see what Friday does. Um, but no question that a bit of risk fear is back in the market right now, and this week the cause of it being the Federal Reserve re-entering the conversation, uh, conver conversations taking place among some Fed governors, uh, some references in the Fed minutes from their April meeting that came out yesterday, alluding to the possibility of a, a June rate hike. And the odds of a June rate hike as priced in to the federal funds futures market doubled this week. Now, that still just meant it went from about 20% to about 40%. I'd say there is still less than a 50% chance that they'll raise rates next month. But I think the Fed putting a foot forward this week to try to prep markets, and it's acting a lot, in my opinion, like what happened last year, where they acted like they were looking to raise in September, and then they didn't do so that gave them October and November to prep markets, and then they did raise in December after practically telegraphing it. That's what I suspect is going on here. I, I would be surprised if they do raise next month, but it, I, it, would, it would feel to me as if they're wanting to test capital markets resilience to another rate hike, perhaps over the summer, or, or one hike before the election. Um, those forecasting that there was you know, four rate hikes coming this year, and then now they're saying two hikes this year. It's difficult to forecast what you think will happen in a year. I can only kind of go one at a time here. But I want to make very clear, we view this as a positive for markets, um, but definitely not a positive in the short term. We would just expect there to be some significant short-term volatility to the extent that a Fed rate hike causes bond spreads to widen, puts pressure in commodity markets, um, a lot of the emerging markets uh, struggle, the, if the dollar were to rally, things of that nature. But ultimately, for the, especially the Bonson Group where we are long-term goal-driven investors, is uh, it will be better for everybody to get normalization done. And we don't think the Fed is in any rush to do it. They've made that rather clear. But certainly to the degree we have an artificially low short-term rate, it is distorting capital markets. It makes it very difficult for an investment manager to price risk. It makes it very difficult for an investor to allocate capital efficiently. So we would rather deal with some short-term volatility uh, and get to a point where we think there's more transparency and more clarity in the market and that there is a, a legitimate risk-free rate for us to reference our investments against, what type of spread over risk, uh, over, over risk-free we're willing to take to make a given investment over a given period of time. When that risk-free rate is 0% artificially, it can distort a lot of decision-making. So I don't know when the, the Fed will act, but we want to be very clear that we expect this to be a prevalent conversation throughout the summer, and it will very likely enhance the volatility. We seem to be having a few more days now that are up triple digits one day, down triple digits on, uh, the next week. That was routine throughout January, February, and that had kind of gone away over the last couple of months. So we are positioning uh, defensively. We want to raise cash to some degree, but we don't want to be tax inefficient in the way we do that. Um, we're very happy about the fact that even in a day like today where the Dow is down 200 early this morning and you see leadership names like Walmart up 9% at one point and Cisco was up big in the Dow behind really good news. So it's still a bottom-up stock pickers market. Um, we like those, the, those names that we think are providing good fundamental quality earnings growth and obviously dividend growth. You know I'm going to get that in there. But we also understand that uh, all capital markets are, are – 
are subject to kind of some of these central bank driven um, uh, fluctuations. So I'm going to leave it there for the week. Uh, we will be back at home base all of next week. We expect a rather uh, intensely busy week um, in, in uh, investment markets, portfolio positioning, expecting to raise a little more cash, looking into more alternative exposures that we think will reduce our beta going into the summer. We're being very active right now, so please feel free to reach out with questions about what that means. Oil is still held in there, by the way, and uh, that's, that's where I think where we'll leave it. Um, for a couple reasons. I, I don't want to go on too long, and frankly, I'm kind of hungry. So I'm going to go out Thursday night now, have dinner with my wife here in Chicago, and you all have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching Dividend Cafe.